de ba ye kene ni mono no bose nketa ai si na ya de ndi bona ma ta di ko si de um ya bo ibo media ka isi wene o tero ni ya bo nu ko zi di o kempa eh basta ma ka ni ibo and ibo community and ye de bena nigeria ya bi fika ina o tero na ibo media eh di ko isi we de so la yo bona nka bo o bose zigi ina bi na ni lo akwo na ibo media eka baro ka e subscribe bo and turn on your notification ke la pe miss any of our update di ka ni ti pe ni ba popo wa mbe kwa mbe e di ko si de o wuri ya wete do no bo sin keta bo stamaka ka ya bi face ada and bo stamaka ka ya bi face abato na ni igbo e bi ko ma cho ki ge ya bi fe ya bo bi from prime minister ma zi samon e pa o wo di foku ni ro kwọ ma choko nge onu ge se bi fe ona drop ora ifu nche ni ro awọ ba samaki yenda ni no wu alright over to you sir this particular structure we are able to conduct this uh, referendum and people are fiscally voting and of course uh, you, you it may also shock you that the reason we have succeeded so far in the civil disobedience is also because of the structure the strong grassroots structure that we have which Nigeria, you know, know, but of course they don't want to tell the other citizens who are available to understand why every effort to stop the seat at home has failed. They tell you it is because people are getting killed and stuff like that. It's a lie. It's because we have a very structure, you know, from the grassroots. All right. We are going to get into the seat at home and everything else. But right. explain this for me. Let me understand. So the administrators in 40 states in Biafra land today. Yes. There are 40 administrators that are in each state that are 15 county head in each county there are five district head and there are other you know the you know the chain of leadership and all that from the state down to the to the district level do these people uh, interact with people do they do they know them of course of course, of course. you know they they are completely in charge of their land that's what is going on <laughs> oh, so so if i call a boy and say now nah, i can get the names of uh, people you may, not, you may not you may not get the name uh, of anybody in a boy state unless you are you know into the struggle okay okay yeah. okay, okay. So what about people who are not into the struggle? How did they vote? Well, well, the, those who are not into the struggle are not necessarily going to vote. These are the people, the the few uh, percentage of the people making noise on social media. But those who are in the struggle are voting massively. Uh, if you look at the videos we are posted on social media, you will see crowd that will shock you. Yeah, Even but... more organized, more organized and better organized than Nigeria election. I, I, you can agree with me if you have come across yeah. the videos. Yeah, but but for 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 you to now say that uh, the Biafrans all voted and this is the percentage that supported it, it wouldn't it be good that everybody had the chance? Well, that is the point. We gave everybody the opportunity to vote, but you know, at the same time, because this is a struggle and we are in a very uh, fragile state, so we make it uh, we make it a. Uh, uh, possible for people to vote online right and then in the in a struggle like this you have to also be very security conscious considering the fact that nigeria is a terrorist state that kills people who ordinary who agitate and do protest so we don't want to endanger the life of our people you know by trying to prove that everybody has to participate everybody must not participate even in the nigeria general election not everybody voted and somebody is still a president so we don't need to prove, uh, you know, everybody that uh, Biafra have participated. Those who believe in Biafra should participate, and they participated, and they are still participating because the vote is still ongoing to the twenty eighth of November. Uh, what about people abroad? You mean in New York here, there are people? Who yes, vote. yes. Everybody is voting online. Those of those of those of uh, Biafrans abroad are voting online, and um, we created we created I, we created a voting. Uh, a voting system using the Google platform, and you have a way of verifying that these people voting there. Yes, we, yes, we verify, and of course, you know, like uh, like uh, those who want to dispute, uh, uh, you know, who want to argue, can we give them opportunity to conduct their own self, their, their own referendum on behalf of Biafra people? All right, this is interesting. Now let's also look at another thing. You have um, you have a new part, a new constitution. That just came up uh I yes on your own. how was it uh, who wrote the constitution how how did the constitution it... the constitution was drafted 
by the representative from the entire 40 states of the effort. So we have people, every state volunteered the people to participate in writing the constitution. And that is the exact, that is some of the, the, the problem or the confusion that people don't actually understand. Everybody must not be part of the, of the constitution at this point, but those who believe in the struggle presented and volunteered to be part of the struggle, uh, part of the constitution. And so that's how we arrive at the constitution that is still open for amendment. You know, constitution is never complete. So you have the names of the people that drafted it, do we know? Yeah, we have the names of the people that drafted the constitution. And it, then also, is it, is it uh, listen, also, listen, listen, it is not only the constitution as, as a matter of fact, we have what we call the declaration drafting committee. The declaration drafting committee also cut across board from all state people volunteered to be part of the drafting committee so so that you bring your idea of course not everybody's uh you know input will be taken but it has to be somehow consolidated into the declaration so the declaration itself is like a document where we have uh, we we try to bring in every idea every grievances that the Afro people who are representing their different uh, state uh, brought in into the uh, committee. So we try to bring everything together and there are different kinds of grievances that uh, we are on, on that ground, the, the, the declaration of the restoration of independence of the Afro is happening in this December. So what we are doing is to carry everybody who believe in this Biafra government along. We don't need to go and drag people who don't believe in the government. So you have to, first of all, believe in the government, volunteer to be part of what we're doing, and you're welcome. So we're not uh, discriminating anybody or pushing anybody away. So those who, who believe in what we're doing are part and parcel of it. Now, uh, the states, back to the states. Um, did you go beyond, because I get a lot of comments about to meet him. I listened to him attentively. I still remember him bragging about how he will return to the state of Biafra, Masob, visited the United States. I traveled from Boston to New Jersey to meet him. Biafra struggle even before I came in. So I told them to bring in the structure that they have and we start working on that. So it is a, every state brought the, in their, their state map, they brought in their state structure. It is not my making. So what I did was to harness the already structure, already made structure from the 1967 down to Owazurike Mosob, down to IPOB and to what we're doing. And so we consolidated everything and make it to be more, uh, uh, you know, uh, organized uh, structure as it is today. So it is not my making. It is the making of the people. Every state brought their, their structure, brought their county structure, brought their district structure, and that's why it is called, the, it's going to be the confederated state of Biafra because we're going to practice confederation where the state who brought in their state structure are going to be on their own. So uh, what about people who are saying they don't want to have anything to do with Biafra? That is part of, that is part of life and it's part of uh, democracy, you know. Uh, even in Nigeria, even Nigeria, when Nigeria was fighting for independence, not didn't want to go to be independent, right? But today they are the one who enjoy it most. So we are not uh, we are not bothered about those who say they don't want to be part of Biafra. They are just a uh, few individuals, just like one uh, percent or even zero point zero percent of people hijack Nigeria and um, impoverish everybody today. So those people saying they don't want to be part of Biafra, are they enjoying the killings in Nigeria? The answer is no. So we, we don't actually care about what they say. That's why we have gone this far. Because All right. few, few people cannot uh, hold everybody hostage. Mm. You are following the trial of Nam Dekano in Nigeria. What, what do you make of how it's going? You know, I don't believe in Nigeria system, in court system. Nigeria doesn't have a court. Nigeria doesn't have a judiciary. So, and that's why if you, I don't know whether you are aware, we have uh, actually banned anything judiciary under Nigeria in Biafra territory, and they are folding up. So if you are not aware of that, I want to make it clear today. We are going to lock them indefinitely, and they will never come back until Biafra uh, become an independent state. After the 2nd of December declaration, we start to pursue 
the legitimacy of Biafra. Nigeria court system and judiciary can never ever function again in Biafra land. It's a threat and a promise. How is that going to happen? How are you going to do it is that? already It is already happening. Are you not seeing them folding up? That is to show you that the Biafra have taken over their land. Our, 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 our plan is to delegitimize Nigeria from the Biafra territory, little by little, step by step, state by state. And that is happening. So judiciary is the next because judiciary in Nigeria has contributed to the entire anarchy you see today. The insecurity you see today is the judiciary. The instability you see today is the judiciary. The banditry terrorism you see today is the judiciary. They have not done anything that will bring justice, fairness, and equity. So they would not need those kind of system in our land. So, and if you're asking me how we're going to do that, we're already doing it. You see, they are folding up. That land belongs to us. And Nigeria has been rejected by the people. Over 50 million has given us the mandate to chase away Nigeria from our land. So however we're going to do it is what the government will decide. And we're doing it the, the way we want. Okay. Um, you know that you are on the list of most wanted people in Nigeria. That is a badge of, or a badge of honor. I am very, very happy that I am in the list. Because if I am not in the list, I would have regretted ever even getting involved in Biafra. So it's a badge of, it's the highest honor I have received in my life. Now, people say, I played the video earlier in the introduction, when Namdi said that if they don't give us Biafra, that Somalia will be better than Nigeria. And people say that what you have achieved is to turn some parts of Igbo land to look like Somalia. That Lagos is not like Somalia, that Abuja is not like Somalia, but Oweri, uh, Olu area, basically is like Somalia. What do you say? Right. So let, me, let, can I, let me address you. Now, do, do you see the, the poverty uh, rate in the world? Where is Somalia placed in the list? It should be at the bottom also. Like <laughs> no, 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 I want you to I want you to tell us. I can find where, it. Where is Nigeria and Somalia? Nigeria is at the bottom too. Yeah. So so in the list now is Nigeria up or down? Down, down, down. Yeah, so it's already it, it doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily mean well, but but it does you know, you know, not actually mean that uh, they're gonna be shooting up shooting gone like in Somali. Somali already overtake Nigeria in a better scale. Nigeria is down. In poverty level so how do you how do you uh you know uh Maz, 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 they're serious uh, let me let me give these are serious things i have a friend here in america mm. who lost his father two years ago from a low area and lost a brother early this year mm. and none of them they've not been able to do any funeral because nobody can go home okay and there are so many places like that in the southeast is that a good thing? Well, I should be asking you, how are the barriers taking place in other parts of Nigeria? No, the, 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 the way people are reading this, they are saying that it's a consequence of this confrontation with the Nigerian authorities. So how, so how, so how is this confrontation making people not to have barrier in their land? Can you explain? Because, because it's not safe. That's what they said. That's why he hasn't so gone. Who is making it not to be safe? <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, I want to. You know, you know, you say this is a discussion, right? No, this is, yeah, we're having a conversation. So if you cannot answer, let me explain. No, no, let me, how. I want you no, to tell me. You want this to answer? Is, no, this is what they said. This is the, what they said. Okay, so this is what they say. But yeah, what about you? you? What about you? What right. about your opinion? What do you think is the reason for not having dairy? No, I, I don't have. I, I go home. I don't have. Okay, so can I explain now? Can I explain the reason? Yeah, give give us the reason. All yeah. right. The reason is because the Nigeria terrorist army and police have been killing our people for many years, even before I joined the Biafra struggle. They killed them in Aba, where they were went to pray, and over 150 officially was announced. Over 150 people were killed in cold blood. Nobody asked questions. Nobody, uh, you know, was held responsible until today. They went to Mazen and Mikano's house, bombed everywhere, killed people there. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was held accountable. They went to Mpo and kill, and these thing, people they are killing never raise a gun against them, right? They were only having flag. They killed in Enugu. They killed in Ebony. So 
When Mazin and Bikano was kidnapped, they went to Kenya to kidnap him against international law, and I took over from there. And do you know what I said in the first place? I said, under my leadership in this Biafra movement, you can never kill Biafra again and go free in Biafra land. So I raised an army called the Biafra Liberation Army to confront these killers. And you know these killers, some of them are repentant Boko Haram. So they recruit them, push them to Biafra land, and people are not talking about that. And when they go to villages, they open G, uh, RPG or G, uh, GPMG and they start spraying bullets. Even, even farms are getting killed. So I said, under my leadership, under this Biafra movement, Nigeria can never kill any Biafra again and live to tell the story. So we raised the Biafra Liberation Army to deal with them and they are neutralizing them. So when they neutralize them, what do they do? They will come after the villagers. And let me tell you, is that the kind of country you want to be proud of? Where you have people carrying guns, defending their land, and instead of them to go after those people that are defending the land, they will go against innocent people. These are the reasons why people are not coming for burial. So tell it the way it is. So, and it is not my fault. It is not my fault. It is not the fault of Biafra. It is the fault of the Nigeria terrorist army who cannot confront the Biafra Liberation Army, but confront innocent people. And why they are doing it is so that we lay down our guns. And that was that's not gonna happen. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you that um knowing that this is how they operate if we believe the story you just told this is how they operate the question yes. is is the best thing to continue to have them kill villagers if we believe this this we, story? We are, we are neutral. believe me there is no any other better way this is the best way if you have any other better way tell me the better right. way is what we are what we are doing now is the better way when they come to kill our people we kill them first and if they come, we will resist them as much as we can. And let me tell you, it will continue like that until none of them will be in Biafra land. It is called attrition, war of attrition. You know, the chief of army staff said that what they are fighting is called um, uh, the, uh, uh, the jungle welfare and uh, asymmetric warfare. No, I am not fighting asymmetric warfare with them. I'm defending Biafra people, and what we have actually declared now is war of attrition. Go and Google it. It is you are going to be fighting until nobody is remaining, and it is not going to be on our side. They are already running away. You know the kind of atrocities people have committed in our land. Is that how to run a government? A government that will come and you don't go after people carrying arms, which you invited with your actions and atrocities. You go after on on, on armed innocent women and children. Is that how to is that the kind of government you want to support so uh, we know what we are doing now is what we're going to do and like i said they should go and google war of attrition we will fight this war with them until we know who is going to give up when i interviewed in Nandekano in 2019 i asked him how many people have um have you lost the question was how many he said thousands let me ask you the same question since this started how many soldiers let me use the word the Biafran, your own soldiers, have you lost? If you, if if we lost people, you see them on social media. Now they are posting some of the people they are claiming to be. We don't lost soldiers. I have to be very sincere with you. We don't lost soldiers. They know it. Let me tell you, we are fighting a very different war with Nigeria terrorist state, and they are confessing. Do you, have you ever in the history of Nigeria? Have you ever, even during the war, it was only during the war actually that the issue of Biafra was discussed at the National Assembly and the entire security chief are crying. We are training, I have a military experience. We are training the Biafra fighters and they are engaging Nigeria in a very systematic war that they have never fought before. And you see, I didn't say it. You can hear it from the, from the horse's mouth. Musa have cried several times. And let me tell you, if they think that in self-defense is a crime, they should go and read international law. Because the point is that nomadic system have taken over and nobody is thinking correctly in Nigeria anymore. You come and kill people and expect them to defend themselves. We are defending ourselves. And like I said, if I have access to bomb today that will go to Asorok, I will first of all engage Asorok. But until then. How many people, not soldiers now, regular people have died? They should mm -hmm. give you they should give you that report. They are the, they are the government now. They should give you the, how many people they have killed, right? They are the one who killed the people, and all we do is to defend them. So they should tell us how many people, how many Biafra women and children have been killed. Because at least you have never had in any way, in any news, 
that Biafra Liberation Army invaded the village and killed everybody there, just like you see in the north and see in the other part of Nigeria. But the military are the one killing. We saw them how they kill people in the Onokoma community. They're born everywhere. Nobody is talking. So when they say that people kill soldiers in Ukoma, nobody knows what led to killing of the soldier in Ukoma. But you know what? Everybody was proudly saying, oh, the military will come and burn, and burn this. And burn. We don't want to be kind to be part of a such system where they will not go after criminals. They will come to where a crime was committed and they go after innocent people. That kind of system should be abolished. And that's what we are abolishing by pulling up Biafra from that, from that Islamic terrorist state. The sit at home uh, every Monday that you support how has it been helping the uh you know the sit at home is very very has been very 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 successful you know what people don't know is that when we started the sit at home because the point is that they don't know why they don't know why we keyed into the sit at home very much it is going to achieve or have actually achieved several things one is that it crushes the economy of nigeria nigeria Two, Wait, hold on. Nigeria. I'm telling you, Nigeria. Yes. Nigeria. Not Eastern Nigeria, Nigeria. If you know the, the, the point, if you listen to Akpadio as dumb as he is, he said that the sit at home is affecting everybody in Nigeria. And nobody's paying attention to that. You know, they have lied and used to propaganda to say, oh, is the economy in the East. What have the economy in the East done for over 50 years? Nothing. Now, let me, no, let me explain. I'm still explaining the sit at home. Now, it is crushes the economy of Nigeria to. We are delegitimizing Nigeria government from Biafra land because it is the, one of the ways to prove that they have no control over the people. Three, they have also that sit at home that demonstrated that they have lost legitimacy over the Biafra people. You don't know what is happening. So you are very close to Sowore. You should ask Sowore, why did he say that South East has, you know, systematically left Nigeria? It is because of the sit at home, because they have lost control over the people and they're listening to only Biafra government. Is a part way to our freedom, and now we are. And let me also explain to you that we are using four mechanisms, four different mechanisms, and different approach to fight this freedom, which has never been done in the past. One is the political approach. Two is the diplomatic approach. Three is the armed struggle, self-defense approach, and four is the civil disobedience, which sit at home is part of it. So these four different mechanisms in what we are using to delegitimize and fight Nigeria to our freedom, and it's working perfectly. The local women who cannot go to the market, the students who cannot go to school, the workers who cannot go to their offices, the businesses that are leaving the East to move to other places, who is paying the price for them? They have a better business ahead of them. They have a better, the student have a better school to attend in future. What we are doing is a price they have to pay. It's a price for freedom. Freedom does not come free of charge. So we understand this, all this uh, nonsense Nigeria is saying. Nigeria will tell you, oh, your business is being destroyed, or oh, your school. Ask yourself, those people that went to school for over 50 years ago, what have they done with, this, with education? Nothing. So we are going to bring alternative, alternative education that will work for them. So they have to pay the price of not going to school if they have to not go to go at this point. And those who don't go to market have to also pay the price of not going to market because i believe they would they would not prefer to have a bomb being thrown in every market every day because it, it's happening somewhere else in order to get freedom so we are not going to that particular uh you know uh, uh fight or defense at, at this point at least nobody is there even though they are throwing bomb in Imo state i don't know whether you're aware of that they are bombing and, and all that we are fighting them with our anti-aircraft even though our anti-aircraft may not be the uh, modern sophisticated anti-aircraft, but it is doing something. At least they don't fly 10 minutes, more than 10 minutes, and they will run away. So so these people that are complaining about school, they should give us a break. It is the price that these people have to pay. Those people complaining about uh, not uh, going to uh, shop or stuff like that, they have other days to go to shop. Every Monday is a sacrifice that we have made to make sure that we speak to the entire world and prove that Nigeria has no control over their front territory. That's what we want to achieve, nothing else on that particular self disobedience, disobedience. Now, Igbo people at home, uh, they say that people like you abroad, you are enjoying your life. They see videos of you dancing, 
drinking they say why is it that they are the ones paying the price people in in lagos people in abuja Igbo people they are not there should, there should, be, there should be more there should be more worried that i left those particular enjoyment that i'm doing including uh, going to club that i used to go including all the enjoyment i used to travel everywhere i'm not doing that anymore for them so there should be more concern that why should i live all this life and i was living why should i not just enjoy myself because i have conscience I have come to this country not by my power but god brought me here so that i will live and bring something back home and i don't want to bring politics back home i don't want to bring any uh, thing i want to bring freedom back home because you know many people travel abroad and all they do is that oh, i want to bring something back home ask them what do you want to bring home back home in nigeria how many people how many nigeria have traveled abroad studied become phd professor they went back home what has been their contribution in Nigeria system, nothing. If you go there, the Nigeria kills you. The system kills you. You can never, even if you are a saint, once you go to Nigeria, you get corrupt. So I did not come here to learn politics, to learn something to bring back to Nigeria so that Nigeria will corrupt me. I decided to bring freedom to my people because that's what they need most. When um, when you see Nam Dekano uh, appear in court and say that he would like the sit at home to end, do you ignore that or do you I ignore, I, ignore, I ignore that why because he's not a free man so what, what would what would it make you believe what he's saying he just he just played his voice when he was a free man talking with you so what you heard in the court does it sound the same i will listen to him when he become a free man i'm not only a free man no. he has to come to finland and sit one-on-one -on -one with me before i can listen to him that is my condition. Because the reason why he is being kept, he is being incarcerated today is because of what I'm doing, is because of the Biafra. So he cannot be captured because why I know the reason they captured him is to end Biafra. And then you expect me to dance to their tone. It's not possible. Even if I bring him out today and he stay in Nigeria there and say, Simon, I'm, stop, I'm not going to stop. So are you planning to go back to Nigeria? People say that. I don't go to Nigeria, I go to Biafra. Yeah, are you planning to go to Biafra? Of course, I will go to Biafra. I will go to Biafra. Why am I fighting? I will go to Biafra to be part of building a system that will work for everybody. When? When Biafra is recognized. By? By international community, by UN and all other. Now, uh, now if, if an American official who is sympathetic to your cause, the Biafra issue, I uh, hear you speak. Do you think that they will um, be inclined to openly come out and say we support people they don't need to they don't need to openly come out they should uh, most of them have had meeting one-on-one -on -one with them and uh, the way i talk with them is differently from the way i talk here so they they listen to me and they, they buy the idea how, of do, how, do you talk, how, how do you talk with them i talked i talk with them presidentially and by media Master Makaya brief Biafra Prime Minister for the Liberal Kuko, number six or the And if you really could Master Makaya brief in that, you know, could see the teacher drop or I feature in Liberal Kuko. A conversation na Ibo Media. And by as in any boy are there. Now you are the catching. Each other walk on. Isa, Isa, Isa. Thank you and God bless.